The field of epigraphy has undergone a silent revolution over the last decade. Today, we discuss the tips and tricks of modern epigraphy on this episode of Ancient Egypt and the Bible. The problem of epigraphy has always been the same. That is, being able to read inscriptions that are hard to see. While the process was laborious, with readers taking weeks to carefully examine a difficult-to-read inscription, new technologies and techniques have emerged that made even the most difficult texts easier. And while an inscription can still take weeks to unlock, the following advanced technologies have transformed epigraphy into a more scientific endeavor. In fact, the way that epigraphy is done today would hardly be recognized to the epigrapher of a decade ago. Gone are the days of crudely magnifying blurry photographs taken on sight. A host of new technologies now exists that would put the space shuttle to shame. And since the announcement of the Mount Ebel amulet inscription, this provides a golden opportunity to review these epigraphic techniques. So, today's video will give the briefest introduction to these seven great tools of epigraphy. Tool number one, digital photography. Digital photography is the foundation of 21st century epigraphy. Even as late as the 1990s, black and white film photography was preferred over digital images because of the detail captured on film. Today, that is no longer true. Even older DSLR cameras can capture an image resolution that exceeds many film photos. But more importantly, DSLR color images can capture color information that is simply not preserved by film photography. Furthermore, in the old days, if you wanted to manipulate an image, you needed to digitize a photograph with a scanner. Even the best scanners result in some image degradation. A DSLR camera can create a raw image that preserves what the camera sees directly from the camera sensor. More image data means a greater capacity to extract information from the image. Tool number two, Photoshop. Photoshop is the Swiss army knife of the epigrapher. And the ability of Photoshop to manipulate photographic information is practically limitless. Photoshop can enhance a single image. It can composite many smaller images together. With Photoshop, the epigrapher can amplify the color curve of a photo. This can make a photograph with low contrast easier to read. Photoshop can also convert a color image to black and white using existing color information. This can provide not just one, but many black and white images that can show different aspects of the same photo. Tool number three, D-Stretch. One of the more interesting advances in the last decade has been the invention of D-Stretch. The developer of D-Stretch sells the program as a plugin used with ImageJ, a free imaging software package. The plugin pulls the colors of red ochre from an image and allows the epigrapher to see the image more clearly. For example, I use D-Stretch to make the petroglyphs from Stein Park, BC easily seen. Tool number four, multispectral photography. With the proliferation of digital cameras, Many people now have a second or third DSLR camera just lying around. As epigraphers, 
we don't need to have those old cameras go to waste. Instead, we can send them to a conversion lab to have them converted for multispectral photography. Most of the photodiodes in DSLR cameras are already sensitive to infrared and ultraviolet light. This is normally a bad thing, as these light wavelengths cause false colors with visible light photography. So, camera manufacturers add filters over the photodiode to screen out infrared and ultraviolet light. By removing the ultraviolet filter and adding a visible light filter, you can get an ultraviolet camera. Ultraviolet cameras are useful for detecting the pigments and minerals that fluoresce in the ultraviolet spectrum. By removing the infrared filter and adding a visible light filter, you get an infrared camera. Infrared cameras are useful for infrared luminescence. With infrared luminescence, you shine a red light upon an object in a darkened room. Some pigments, like Egyptian blue, fade over time so that you can no longer see the color. However, the pigment is still there, and Egyptian blue absorbs red light and converts it into strong infrared light that can be captured by an infrared camera. In this photo, we see some beads from the city of Nuzi in Iraq that were decorated with Egyptian blue and under infrared photography, they brightly radiate infrared light. 5. Multiple light photography. With advances in photography, has also come advances in photographic setups and procedures that capture difficult to obtain information. One of the most rudimentary of these is the multiple light setup. With multiple light photography, the camera is kept in one position and the light sources are moved around the piece in progressively small angles. Typically, this is done in a 180 degree arc. The advantage of this is that it can capture the fine details in the recesses of a piece, which can be exposed just by moving the light to another position. Tool number six, polynomial texture maps. This technique scans the surface of an artifact and recreates the surface of an object as a high resolution map of polygons. Using this, you can see the object from various angles and shine artificial lights upon the map to see the details. Furthermore, the contrasting topography of a piece can be emphasized so you can detect small details in the texture of the piece. Polynomial texture map scans are often saved as an RTI, Reflectance Transformation Imaging, files. Similarly, other scanning technologies like X-ray tomography can also be saved as an RTI file. The advantage of these files is that you can generate a rendered image of the scan in real time and add a light source that you can move around to shine light on the object model from various angles. RTI files are often the next best thing to being able to seeing an object in person. In our example photo, we see two images of an early alphabetic inscription, Sinai 349. The image to the left is a normal photograph, and the image to the right is the polynomial texture mapping, which has been saved to an RTI file. You can see a marked difference in the epigraphy between the two images. And tool number seven, strobe lighting. Sometimes none of the above techniques are all that helpful, and the epigrapher has to just examine the artifact in person. Perhaps the contrast between the inscription and the matrix is too low. 
Or maybe the inscription is too shallow to see using photographs, or the photographs don't lead to a certain reading. There is fortunately one more advanced technique that is helpful. While not strictly speaking new, strobe lighting has recently found new, new usefulness in epigraphy. When you look at a stela with only discrete color differences between the inscription and the matrix, your vision adjusts faster than your brain can figure out what you're seeing. In a tenth of a second, your visual cortex becomes saturated, and those discrete color differences between the inscription and the matrix wash out. What strobe lighting does is prevents your visual cortex from saturating. This way, you can continue to see the fine differences between the inscription and the stone matrix. The net result is that visual features not seen previously just pop out. It's, it's pretty amazing. It's, it's pretty, pretty amazing. So anyway, there you have it. Seven tricks and tools of epigraphy. Anyway, I hope you found this video interesting. I hope you learned something. And thank you very much for watching. And I will see you next time on Ancient Egypt and the Bible. Yeah.